it is with a certain amount of dread <laughs> <laughs> that I that we open this um, this procurement and finance <laughs> coffee break. Right. Anybody, right, I'm English, and you know when you go to an event and someone suggests, the facilitator suggests you're going to do an icebreaker, <laughs> and I have that cold feeling of dread go through my soul where I'll try and fake a phone call or uh, I forgot to go to the loo in order to avoid it. I've got exactly that feeling at the moment. Because um, Claire's brilliant idea is that we're going to do role play. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I just and know. it's not the kind of role play which I was hoping for. <laughs> no, exactly. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, it just the whole thing is just now proving. But what, is, what, what are we going to talk about today? Actually, it's the, it's the return match. You know, this is the second leg of the of the loving. So we've done the you know why doesn't finance love procurement, and now it's my turn mm. as to why procurement doesn't love finance. Mm, mm. So, so, yes. So, can I start? Uh, yes. So, <laughs> why, do, why do you think procurement generally doesn't love finance, um, then, Richard? I, well, I, look, I, I think we, we, we talked about this a lot, didn't we, in, in the, um, in before, and it comes down to the same things. It's the obsession with detail in business cases mm. instead of going for the bigger picture and the overall value. It is mm. the constant arguing about, I present, you know, we, I, we, present savings and we get told they're not savings they're cost avoidance so all of our hard work doesn't contribute which is very annoying um it's about the um mm. it's about data and spend data and the organization of the vendor master it's the it's the inability to vary process and we talked about agile mm. you know the thing that sometimes as a procurement side, drives me mad about finance is we're operating to a like a monthly schedule. You know, if mm. we miss the approval meeting in June, we've got to wait for the approval meeting in July. Mm. It's like, come on, we've got to do yeah. this. So it's, I suppose you know it's exactly the same thing we talked about before. It's it's those frustrations. But I acknowledge, as we agreed in the last session, respect that we each have our own jobs to do and there are boundaries, but we can probably overcome that with communication. I recognise that that's probably yeah. where we're going to be. So, so the reason I came up with this idea of uh, doing a role play of a scenario and uh, just talking a scenario through and then talking yeah. it through again I'm using a framework. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason I thought <clears throat> of doing that is um, quite a few companies recently have introduced frameworks for giving feedback right. okay. giving feedback to yep. colleagues that yeah, you yeah. work with i think uh, a feedback framework is is useful because if if there's a tension between a relationship mm -hmm. it gives you a framework to go what are the mm. steps i need to go through to re-establish good communication yeah, yeah, yeah. because sometimes um when when this tension you know mm -hmm. in between finance and procurement or or, mm -hmm. or two team members we, we avoid communicating because we don't like the tension. No. But but the right thing to do for both parties <laughs> yeah. is to address it and get the working relationship back on track. Yeah, I accept that. I'm okay. still not with the whole <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> role so, play. But so, anyway, all right. so, so anyway, so, to, so today we're going to use the CEDA framework. And CEDA okay. stands for mm. Content... Um, context, examples, diagnosis, actions, and review. Right. And this model was uh, designed by a leadership and management skills consultant, Anna Wildman, in 2003. Okay. Right. And it has since been um, introduced in some organizations. But mm -hmm. but there are the point is, there are lots of frameworks yeah, yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah. There are. Uh, I know you've got a McKinsey framework, yeah, McKinsey that, framework that, yep. that you like using. The point is, it's a framework, it's a methodology to, mm. the, to, to tackle difficult conversations. Mm. So, right. in this scenario, I am going to play a finance professional <laughs> right. who is responsible for budgeting and forecasting at a manufacturing company. Okay. You're going to, Richard, yes. going to prefer, uh, be going a to procurement professional. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, so and you're going to be in charge of purchasing some raw materials for the company. All right. Okay. Uh, so just to put it in context, we 
have had some disagreements about the way raw materials are being pur uh, purchased mm -hmm. and we're struggling to communicate effectively to one another. Oh, right. Okay. That will never happen. Well, I'm sure we'll be fine. Okay. Right. So let's go with the role play. We're just going to talk it through okay. uh, without using CEDA and see how it goes. Okay. Well, okay. okay. Right. So, Richard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to talk to you yeah. about recent purchase of raw materials. Right. for our manufacturing process. Okay. We've had some issues with the timing of the purchase and it's caused some delays in our production schedule. Right, okay. There might have been a few delays, but at the end of the day, we followed the process, we got management sign off, so what's your problem? Well, I appreciate your explanation. <laughs> well, I felt there was a lack of communication between our departments. Moving forward, I think it would be beneficial if we could have a more collaborative approach to purchasing raw materials. Well, only in so far. I mean, look, if you want it to change, then review the process, change the process, and I'll do it differently to make it easier. But, you know, mm. what else do you want me to do? Mm. So, I think I think there, when we gave a bad example, we're still probably... Well, our, 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 our bad example was still being quite polite, <coughs> wasn't it? We were being polite. And, yeah. you know, okay, I'm playing a slightly bolshy role, but I think we all know it, those conversations are a bit more um, heated, blunt and heated blunt, in And they real happen life. everywhere, yes. and we've probably all been in them. Yes. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, okay, we played it slightly nicely, but it's not hard to see that actually you have a few of those conversations. It's not surprising that we the functions don't get on because that's just a one-way trip yeah. to yeah. Not, not liking each other at all. Right. So, so let's try your model yeah, and, so and now, see if we can do it better. Now yeah? we're going to apply the seed of fate feedback method okay. to this scenario. So okay. CEDA, the first step stands for context. So start by um, uh, the feedback, uh, by describing the context and the purposes of the feedback. So right. so I'm going to try it better this time, right? right? So Good. Richard, yes. I wanted to have a conversation about how we can improve our collaboration and decision making when it comes to purchasing raw materials. Okay. Right. Okay. Engagement. It. So the E and CEDA gets the person's attention and engage them in conversation. Okay. So I know we sometimes have different perspectives, but we I think do. it's important for the two of us to work together and find a solution that the company benefits. Fair enough. Okay. So we've said we need to talk about collaborate on raw materials and we need to have, even though we've got different perspectives, mm -hmm. we've got to work together. Mm -hmm. So the, the D in CEDA, describe the behaviour or situation that's causing the issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I felt there was some miscommunication about the timing of the raw material purchase and that caused delays to our production. Right. Okay. So now the action is, let's suggest some specific actions that can improve the situation. Okay. okay, so I'm going to say to you, moving forward, I think it would be beneficial if we could have a frequent communication about purchasing decisions and have a more collaborative approach to decision-making. Right. Okay. So, so to summarise, we both agree that we think better communication and collaboration around purchasing decisions. How about we schedule a meeting next week to review the guidelines and expectations mm -hmm. about each of our roles and responsibilities? Totally good with me. Okay. And do you know what? Okay, we're, we're not hamming it up, but we're running through the structure. But there's a really key word in there, which you said, you know, I felt like there was some miscommunication. And actually, for anyone who's familiar with the McKinsey feedback model, the key thing there is telling the other person about how something made you feel. Because unlike an argument about, you know, is it is it black, is it white, is it on or is it off? When someone says how they feel, you, you can't disagree with how mm. someone feels because it, it's it's how they feel. Yeah. And so you, we've shifted the conversation from being a, a you know a clash about mm. I follow process, you didn't think that process delivered the right result. Well, mm. I've done my job. You yeah. Know, which is all really confrontation that doesn't lead to a resolution. But the Cedar model, as a feedback, because it focuses on feeling and resolving. Yeah, conflict. and and then an action to help resolve exactly. it. Exactly. Because if you just have a conversation saying, you know, what you did didn't work for me. Yeah. Uh, and you're not actually suggesting a solution to the problem going forwards. That's that's not that helpful. And, and is this it? is a really big thing. We know from our personal lives or watching politicians, it's easier to criticise. It's less easy 
to come up with a constructive, collaborative way of resolving it. Mm. So, look, I think, you know, the takeaway that I've got is, you know, if you've got your own, if you're familiar already with a great feedback model, fantastic. If it's not something that you've adopted, have a look at the Cedar model. It's out there. You can read about it, and we'll share a link in the, um, you know, in the um, the bio for the for the for the coffee break. But equally, there are other models out there as well. It's yeah. finding one that works for you. Yeah. But the purpose is better relationships, yeah. right? And I think it just goes down to the fact that I, I have personally worked in organisations mm. where, you know, finance and procurement pretty much hated each other yeah. and yeah. Um, and that had become quite ingrained in the teams but that actually isn't isn't good for either team and it's not good for the company no, it's so not. if you're if you're perhaps and in it's a not good for the individual no, it causes no. huge stress yeah. Yeah. and if perhaps you're in a bit of one of those situations mm. and you're not sure how to resolve it yeah, yeah. I think just having a framework can give you a bit of confidence in tackling those difficult conversations especially where you've got maybe a mismatch in seniority as well yeah. because yeah. It's, a, it's a good way for a junior person to give feedback to a senior person without those dynamics coming into a play as well. Yeah, yeah. And so, then and then once you've started, you probably grow in confidence because, you know, once once uh, once one person can see the other person is trying yeah, yeah. to uh, uh, create good communication, develop an action plan. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it's just it's it's just an idea. Let let us know if you're able to use it. Or share um, what you use yes. instead. Um, but either way communication collaboration based on personal relationship and resolution mm. and agreeing the way forward is you know, mm. a good thing i, I watched a, a podcast recently i can't, can't remember who it, who it right. was with but they said uh, something that's that's a, a good point they said 80 percent of any job is about working with people well there we go right now talking about collaboration and agreement um we're still slightly up in the air as to what we might talk about next, but if I get my way, obviously I'm going to have a collaborative discussion about how we do that. <laughs> I feel it's time that we address one of those um, great ideas that procurement and finance sometimes have together in order to enforce discipline, which is no PO, no pay. Mm. And we'll talk a little bit about it, but maybe we'll talk about some of the things you might achieve. We'll talk about some of the pitfall or maybe we'll build on what we've done today to see if there might be a better way of getting your colleagues to follow just good practice in the way that mm. you order goods and services mm. should we do that yeah there you go <laughs> collaborative agreement <laughs> all right on that note as ever lovely that you could join us please leave your feedback and tell us the topics you'd like us to address and just to sow the seed for idea we are thinking of doing a live webinar q a discuss some topics bring some people in if you like that idea let us know but we'll let you know some more details in the future but for now from the procurements procurement and fine procure procurements that's a good word <laughs> procurement and finance coffee break claire and i bye bye bye